In this video, I'm going to show you how I paint the Leagues of Votan Cronus Homogeny. Hi everyone, and welcome to another brushstroke painting guide. So as you heard from the intro there, the topic for this video is going to be painting the Leagues of Votan. And the colour scheme I've picked is going to be my take on the Cronus Homogeny. So I particularly like the black armour of the theme, but I wasn't too keen on all of the yellow. So what I've done is I've pretty much swapped that out for a nice rich gold colour, which I think is more in keeping with Space Dwarves anyway. Okay, so now we know what we're going to paint, let's go make a start. Now the first thing you're going to notice is I'm going to be painting this as sub-assemblies. So there's a couple of reasons for that. The first one is it makes it easier for me to show you what's happening on camera. And the second thing is it means that I can paint in details which would be difficult to get to or obscured if it was fully assembled. You'll also notice that this model's already been primed for painting. For this I've used some Vallejo surface primer all over in black to begin with and then a zenithal prime of grey just to pick out those details. And finally, throughout this video, I'm also going to be indicating what brush I'm using during each stage, and that'll be indicated up at the top with these little labels. Okay, so let's start getting some paint on the model, and we're going to start off with painting in all of the armor joints and the tubing, and for this I'm going to use some Eschen Grey from Games Workshop. Really simple stage to start off with then. I've just added a little bit of water just to thin the paint down so it goes on nice and clean and smooth. I'm just gonna paint in all of these armor joints and these hoses. I'm using a nice big brush so I can get this done nice and quick. Um, I've thinned it down so that I'll probably only need one coat, but if you don't get a solid finish with that first coat, then let it dry and apply a second to make sure you do get a solid finish. Now the aim here really isn't to try and be super neat, it's more just a case of making sure that you get the paint on cleanly and smoothly and get it into all of the creases and the grooves in the joints and the hoses. Um, any mistakes that you make in terms of painting on areas that you didn't mean to, don't worry about it, let it dry because we'll be painting over it later anyway. So moving on to the next step, and I'm going to base coat in all of the black armor details now. And for this, I'm going to use flat black from scale 75. Again, a nice simple step this. All you need to do is thin the paint with a touch of water to make sure it flows and settles nice and smoothly. Again, you can stick with your big brush because you don't need to be particularly neat. Just take that little bit of extra care when you come across any of the areas that you've already painted in Eschen Grey. If you do happen to make any mistakes, then just let it dry and you can go back in and correct later with some Eschen Grey. Now you should find the coverage of this is actually pretty good, especially if you're using it over a lighter primer like this. Uh, but I would still recommend that you apply several thin coats to make sure you build up to a solid colour and also get that really nice rich matte finish that we're after. As you can see, I'm not worried about painting over the uh, rune details here because I know I'm going to paint those in again later. But for bigger areas such as the knee pads, I am going to try and keep those as clean as possible just to make it easier to paint in that gold later. So just work your way around the model in a logical order and make sure you get a nice clean smooth finish. Um, make sure you work it into all of these details and um, don't forget, obviously, to paint in any sub-assembly items you've got as well. So after a couple of coats, you should have something that looks a bit like this. And for the next stage now, I'm going to paint in all of the gold details. And for this, I'm going to use Retributor Armor from Games Workshop. So I've moved down the brush size for this step just because I need to have a little bit extra control and I am going to try and be as neat and clean as possible and paint in all of the gold details. As usual though, if I do make any mistakes, I will just let it dry and I'll go back in and correct again with some flat black or Eschen Grey as applicable. Um, to get the paint flowing nice and smoothly, I've added a touch of water on my palette and I will be applying several coats to get to a nice, rich, solid finish. So 
So for larger areas such as the knee pad and the shoulder pads and you want to get a nice smooth clean finish, the uh, main tip really is to try not to overwork the paint. By that what I mean is you don't want to be uh, moving your brush around in the paint on the surface um, any more than you have to. So just encourage it to settle into the area you want and then move on. That way when the paint is drying you won't be moving your brush through it and making bumps and ugly marks. In terms of painting in these sort of icon details here, um, I found having a lightly loaded brush was the best method. That way you've got total control and you don't run the risk of the paint running out of control and flooding into the grooves. Um, it's almost a bit like doing um, a wet version of a dry brush. You only need to lightly touch the surface really just to get the high pigment and the fleck onto the surface. Um, and then you can apply several coats to build up to a solid color. Moving on to the next base coat color and that's going to be all of the silver details and for this I'm going to use some graphite from Dark Star Miniatures. So this is very similar to the stage that we've just done with the gold. I'm just going to work my way around the model and pick out all of the silver details. I'm going to stick with my size 1 brush so I've got that little bit of control and I'm going to try and be as neat and careful as possible. Obviously if I do make any mistakes and it's not a problem I'm just going to let it dry and I can go back in and correct it with whichever color I need. Now in order to get a nice smooth finish I have thinned this paint quite a bit so I will need to apply two coats to make sure I get a nice solid finish. I'm also going to take the opportunity at this point to paint in all of the rivets on the armour and this might sound a bit onerous and a bit uh, time consuming but actually it's really not as bad as you think, it's very quick and simple to do. Very similar to how you painted in the gold runes in the last step, you need to have a lightly loaded brush and then you can just dab the very tip of the bristles onto the top of each rivet and that will just give you a nice silver dot. Now there's actually quite a deceptive number of silver details on this model so do take your time to pick them all out and just work your way around the model. And once you have you should have something that looks a little bit like this. You'll also notice that I've painted in the uh, accents around the collar and the inside of the collar that was just Eshen Grey and Retributor Armour. Now I'm going to paint in all of the red details for the weapons and for this I'm going to start off with a base coat of Mephiston Red from Games Workshop. Another very simple step then, just paint in all of the panels that you want to be red on each of the weapons. You'll find that the coverage from Mephiston Red is actually pretty good, as it is a base paint from Games Workshop. But um, I thinned it down and applied it as two smooth coats just to make sure I got a nice solid colour. Right, okay, so with that final base colour painted in, the model's looking pretty cool already. The matte black really contrasts nice against the gold. So, now it's time to apply some washes, and the first one is going to be to all of the ashen grey and silver details, and for this I'm going to use some Null Oil from Games Workshop. So for this step, I'm going to continue to use my size 1 brush because I need that little bit of control to make sure the wash goes where I need it to. Now washes are used to bring uh, shadow and depth to a colour. Because they're a lot thinner, they'll settle into the recesses but not onto the high points. So you want to use your brush just to move the wash around on the surface and encourage it to settle into all of those grooves and details. And then when you're happy, you need to leave the wash to dry fully before moving on to the next stage. This will usually be between about 30 to 40 minutes. 
Now you can be pretty generous with your application of the wash because we need to get quite a heavy uh, shade on the Eschen Grey and the metal anyway. Um, but do bear in mind that you don't want to flood the model. So try and get a nice even coverage across all of the surface and paint it onto all of the Eschen Grey and silver details. It's also worth pointing out that I didn't try and shade any of the rivets, just leave those as they are. Okay, so with that shade now nice and dry, I'm gonna move on to applying a shade to all of the gold details. And for this, I'm gonna use some Seraphim Sepia from Games Workshop. Exactly the same process as the last stage then. You just need to apply a nice even coverage over all of the surface of the gold and encourage it with your brush to settle into all of those creases and details. And not forgetting the most important thing when working with a shade, always let it dry fully before moving on to the next stage. And the next stage for this model is going to be applying the final shade wash and that's going to be to all of the red details on the weapons and for this I'm going to use Caraber Crimson from Games Workshop. No great surprise then for this stage, it's exactly the same as we've just done for the last couple. The only thing is you need to try and be as careful as possible to keep the shade only on the red details. But work it round and encourage it into all of those creases and grooves and then let it dry fully before moving on. Okay then, so those shade washes have added some lovely depth and shadow to those colours, but for the gold in particular, it has darkened it down quite a bit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to brighten that gold back up again by adding a layer, and for this I'm going to use some gold from Vallejo. Now for this step, I'm not looking to paint all the gold back in, actually what I'm doing is I'm just looking to pick out those areas where I want to bring back that extra shine and where the light would catch the most. So what I've done is I've thinned the paint down so it's actually a little bit translucent and I'm going to apply one thin layer just to bring back that shine and um, bring back that extra interest and detail to the gold. For example, the nodules on the back of the spine here, and then maybe the, uh, the sort of horn bits that come off each of the sides, just to bring those out as well so they're not lost into the shadows. And for these details on the collar, because they're kind of cylindrical, I'm just going to paint a line across the very topmost edge so that it keeps its shadows on the sides and then is brighter across the top. And that should just bring a bit of interest and make it look a bit more three-dimensional. And then just do exactly the same on the other side. Like I say, I'm not going to try and build this to a solid colour. I actually want some of it to show from underneath. So it is just a case of just painting on some extra shine. Very similar story then with the knee plates. Um, I want it to look like it's catching most of the light from above. So I'm going to paint in a bit of a crescent shape across the top. Um, and because the paint is really thin when it dries, it will blend in really nicely with the other color underneath and just give that extra shine and highlight. With all that gold looking nice and bright and shiny again, it's time to turn our attentions to the black armor. I'm gonna start off with the first of a few edge highlights. And for this, I'm gonna start off with some Dark Reaper from Games Workshop. 
Okay, so the aim of this step is to edge highlight all of the black armor edges with the Dark Reaper. Now this will by far be the most time consuming step of the whole process, but it is worth doing and it is worth doing as cleanly and as neatly as possible. The Dark Reaper is actually quite a subtle color when it dries, so um, this is a good opportunity to get a feel for where those edges are. On this model, it looks like the edges should be really easy and sharp to catch, but actually they're quite soft and rounded. So don't be too worried if you can't get an edge straight away. Um, for a lot of these, I did actually go in and uh, paint in roughly where the edge was and then go and neaten everything back up again with some of the Scale 75 black. So really what I'm saying here is don't feel that you need to get these perfect first time. In fact, you probably won't. So just take your time, work your way around and pick out those edges as best you can. So as you can see, I've moved down the brush size again. This is really just to give me a little bit more control and to allow me to access those really fine details. Now, if you're interested in some more tips and tricks in terms of improving your edge highlighting, then please do hang around to the end of this video and I'll give you some more details on a video you can watch for that. So as I said, not all those edges are gonna go perfect first time. So all you need to do is come back in with your scale 75 flat black and neaten up all of those lines until you're happy with them. So with all of those edges painted in, you should now have something that looks a little bit like this. And you'll be pleased to know that we're going to move on to another stage of edge highlighting. But don't despair, this one is a lot quicker and easier to do because we're just going to be picking out the topmost edges where the light hits the most. And for this, I'm going to use some Thunderhawk Blue from Games Workshop. So as I say, this really isn't as onerous as it sounds and this stage really doesn't take that long at all. Um, all you're looking to do is pick out the top edges of all the armor plates where the light's gonna catch the most. And this will just bring a bit more interest and really make the armor pop. So because you've got that Dark Reaper highlight on there already, that actually serves as a guideline for you to follow. And you'll find that you'll be able to pick out those edges a lot quicker with the Thunderhawk Blue. So just work your way around the model and pick out all those topmost edges and um, highlights that you want to exaggerate on the armor. Of course, mistakes will happen again, so don't panic, just let it dry, and then you can just neaten things back up again with some flat black. Okay, so that didn't take so long, did it? And just look how amazing it's looking. So it's definitely worth the effort. So sticking with our edge highlights, we're now going to do the red details on all the weapons. And for this, I'm going to use some Evil Sun Scarlet from Games Workshop. Okay, so this is exactly the same process as we've been doing. We should be quite familiar with edge highlighting by now. We've certainly done enough. Um, so I'm just gonna pick out all of the edges on the red panels just because um, this is quite a subtle highlight and it'll look quite nice. So just work your way around and pick out all of those edges.
With those red highlights done, I thought it would be a good time to get most of the sub-assemblies added in, make sure things fit properly. And I think it's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to move on to any of the glowing items like the plasma gun. And uh, for this, I'm going to start off by painting in those details with some bold titanium white from Proacrypt. So I've just thinned the paint down as usual uh, so it flows nicely and I'm going to carefully paint in with my small brush the plasma coils on the uh, on the pistol and then I'll paint in the little lamp on the front of the chest just making sure that I get a nice solid finish. And then to give them a nice icy glow I'm going to apply a layer of Pyler Glacier Contrast Paint from Games Workshop. So for this step, I'm going to use the contrast paint very much as a heavy wash. I'm using it neat straight from the bottle and applying it all over the white details I've painted. So obviously because this is quite a heavy application, you are going to need to give it plenty of time to dry fully before moving on to the next stage. Which gives me an opportunity just to try the final bits of the sub-assembly, just to make sure that they fit properly while it's drying. Um, it also gives me a chance to say, um, I hope you're enjoying this video. If you are, then please do give it a like. And if you'd like to see more of these videos, then please hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click the notification bell to be told whenever I post another video. So now that contrast paint is fully dry, I can move on to the final couple of stages. And the first one is going to be edge highlighting the silver details. And for this, I'm going to use some graphite from Darkstar Miniatures. For this step, I'm not going to go too crazy with highlights. Um, I quite like the muted darker gray anyway. So I'm just going to pick out a few of the uh, sharpest edges and topmost edges just to add a bit of highlight and a bit of interest to the silver. which brings us on to the last stage of this painting guide, and that's going to be adding a final spot highlight to the black armor. And for this, I'm gonna use some Pharisian Gray from Games Workshop. So this really is now just a finishing touch to the black armor, and it just adds that final little bit of pop. So what you're looking to do is just find each of the sharp corners and just paint in um, a small amount of the Frisian gray, just to give it a little bit of spot highlights to those edges. And what that'll do is it'll add a bit of interest and a little bit of glint and draw the eye just to break up those black panels and really make that armor pop. So with those highlights done, all that remains to be done is to add the miniature to its base and the miniature is finished. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, then please do hit that like button and don't forget to drop a comment below. Let me know what you'd like to see more of. Um, for all details in terms of the materials and the models I've used, I've listed those in the description below, along with some links in terms of where you can get those at discount prices, including a full paint bundle courtesy of Element Games, where you can get all the paints I've used for this at a discount price. If you have enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, then please do hit that subscribe button and don't forget the notification bell to be told whenever I post another video. And finally, I'd love you to stay on the channel and watch some more videos. So I did mention earlier on in the video that I had a great one for helping improve your edge highlighting. So if you'd like to watch that, then please click this link here. And also, I've just finished an Empress Children video, which I think you might find very interesting as well. So if so, please click this link here.